Um, so Heather Valley is going to talk uh, from Duke University about um, Sakai Conversations, which is a, a new tool that's being developed, uh, what it is, where it's going, and, and how you can help. Um, so we may be... Heather, you should have access. Um, hi, yes, thank you. I have access to a screen, but the presentation that I sent to Martin isn't showing for me to do anything with it. It's, do you see the arrows that let you move step forward and backward through? Uh, I think yes, I do. Okay, so that should be your presentation ready to go. There you go. There we go. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, hi, as uh, mentioned, I'm Heather Valley with Duke University, and here I'm here to talk about the new Sakai Conversations tool. Um, a little background. Our instructors in STEM and computer science especially have really liked using the Piazza tool, a third-party tool for question and answer, which was fine until COVID hit and Piazza had to drastically reimagine their revenue model, whereupon it became very much not fine. So uh, we decided that we would uh, attempt to develop a entirely new Sakai native tool to answer those instructors' needs. So here's a bit about our process. Uh, we started with uh, pedagogical research to figure out what was needed in um, an asynchronous communication tool such as this. Uh, we looked at 70 pedagogical studies, um, came up with about 42 recommendations and identified 10 values that we use to inform the development process. We also collected user stories from faculty, staff, students, and the larger Sakai community. And a uh, shout out to Michael Green for putting together an Airtable interface that allowed us to connect all of these user stories or, well, the ideas behind the user stories with the pedagogical research so we could surface the most important things which uh, we uh, transferred into features that we either have implemented or hope to implement in future versions of the conversations tool. Uh, version one of the tool uh, was developed over a 20-week schedule with two iterations for review. Uh, the review was done by instructors and students uh, for version one at Duke. Version two, we have reached out uh, beyond Duke to the larger Sakai community. And we also um, got feedback from the Sakai community through a number of uh, group meetings. At the moment, we um, have or have worked with 12 instructors from uh, across institutions and disciplines. We moved beyond uh, STEM and computer science to the humanities, social sciences and such for the second iteration. And um, we also worked with students, both grad students and undergrad from a variety of disciplines. A bit about our team. Um, Duke Learning Innovation, which is the team I'm part of, um, was a part of this, but we also worked with Longsight, who most of you are quite familiar with, and also uh, the Crux team, which is the creative and user experience team that is part of the Duke Office of Information Technology. And we worked with the uh, broader Sakai community in getting feedback and um, information on what was necessary in this tool. Now, um, here is a screenshot of what conversations looks like in the um, Duke instance of Sakai. On the left-hand side, you'll see the menu that um, has the various subject um, names, as well as the person who uh, posted the subject, and a little bit of information. For example, this one has a little a uh, green check mark to indicate that it's been answered by an instructor. Um, up here we have all the pinned things. Instructors can go and pin uh, questions that they consider to be particularly important and everyone will see those at the top of the menu. And then further down we have all questions. Uh, we have the ability to tag everything and then you can sort via tags, for example, if you tag something week one, you can sort and see every question that's related to week one. 
And uh, you can also uh, filter based on the tags and other things. On the right hand side, you see the uh, full Q&A interface uh, with the author, when things were posted, whether it was answered, a title, what the question is. Students, as well as instructors, have the ability to bookmark things that are particularly personally, personally relevant. And um, those are one of the things you can filter on. Uh, those, the bookmarks are only seen by the individual bookmarking them, unlike pinning. Uh, since I'm looking at this as an instructor, I would have the ability to unpin things if they were no longer relevant. Uh, instructors can indicate whether something's a good question. And we have a currently limited number of icons that we can use, um, like smiley faces and such, as a reaction. And here you can see there's an instructor answer, and those are always highlighted. So students can, uh, with a quick skim, see right away which um, answers are provided by instructors as opposed to feedback by other students. Uh, we also have a variety of settings that I'm not going to get into in a lightning talk, but uh, instructors have a lot of control over who can do what within this interface. So let's talk about what is happening next. We're currently working on version two. Uh, that's going to bring out threaded discussions, um, the ability to uh, set a timed display. You know, it can be shown from X date and time and then close at Y date and time. Uh, we're looking for ways to uh, provide notifications. And um, a bit later on, we're planning on implementing grading as well, a connection from this tool to the gradebook. Um, version two is currently planned to launch in um, for our beta. Uh, in early to mid-December. The tool as a whole has been contributed back to Sakai and will be available to everyone with Sakai 22. So that is something uh, to keep an eye out for when you do all of your upgrades. Um, now we have some questions for y'all. For example, what features are important to you um, in LMS thread discussions tool? Uh, what features would help you create an inclusive environment? And um, how can we balance the issue of collecting enough learning analytics to make sure that the tool and the course is serving uh, the students well versus privacy? We have a QR code here if you want to hold your phones up and uh, grab that. And I'm going to go to our last slide where uh, there's an email address that you can send any comments or questions to, or you can visit uh, a website for more information about the tool and a link to submit user stories of your own. Uh, this QR code here would also get you there. So with all that said, I think I am about at time. You are. <laughs> Very good, thank you. And and I, I I know that it's difficult to present and also keep an eye on the chat, but there's lots of conversations going on around um, when we might see this and how good it looks and would there be a way to import the old uh, forums or discussions into the new conversations tool and on and on. So um, you're getting, you're generating a lot of interest here. Heather, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad. Um, Adrian Fish is the developer who's been um, putting all this together. So um, it looks like he's been in there answering things yeah. for us. Which yeah, he's, he's pointing out there's not a, a good one-to-one -one correspondence between the data structures of the, the old forums, discussions tool, and, and conversations. And so it will have to be an import, uh, which will be sort of like a translation into a foreign language at best. So, <laughs> And yeah. Josh and Wilma from Longsight have been uh, key members of the development team as well and they're in their answering too so um any further questions if you want to email us them i will be um we they will come to us and we'll be happy to answer them fantastic great thank you heather that's wonderful all right folks that wraps it up for this last of the three uh, lightning talk sessions for the day um but stick around don't go anywhere don't leave yeah, Wilma is about to say something dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> don't go not, anywhere because yeah, no, we're going no right break, into the next no section. Um, we're going to segue right into our wrap up. Um, so, you know, whew, it's been an exciting day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It has a lot of information coming at us. 
We had a lot of great presentations. And again, I encourage you to reach out to those individual Lightning Talk presenters to learn more. Um, there's lots of um, PowerPoints and links and additional info in the discussion area. So please um, go grab that stuff um, while you still have access to the site.